except for Mary. Mary, Mary's exempt because she's going to Dallas. Remember that show, Dallas? Boy, that was yeah. fun. Bobby, Bobby. Who shot Jr. Anyway, where are the offering bowl plates? Bowls. Let's go ahead and we'll we'll take our offering. If you would bow with me for a moment, please. We want to thank God. God, we thank you for your unbelievable provision. We thank you, God. Even even if we don't have anything right now, we believe that you will provide for us because you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. We we believe that, Father God. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. We're not going to worry about what's going on in Fox News. We're not going to worry about any of that stuff, Jesus. We're going to be faithful, Jesus-loving, Bible-reading, Bible-thumping, Gospel sharing Christians. So thank you for your your provision for this church. We haven't missed a payment. Well, we missed a couple of payments, but it, I I could blame it on somebody, but I won't. I'm just I'm stuck. <laughs> Amen. There goes my paycheck. <laughs> no, it's my fault. I leave the mail down in the. I leave <coughs> I leave the mail down there in the uh, mailbox for like a week now everybody say thank you to Stephanie Stephanie is our trustee she, she takes care of the finances we want to say thank you to her come on people I'm in trouble here so I'm do something for you. hallelujah <coughs> tonight when it comes to the the overall Valley Ministry Center, we we want to. It is my hope, my and my prayer, that we will integrate with our brothers and sisters who come to the traditional service. Sometimes you have a traditional service, a contemporary service. It's like it's like a different church or something. No, we're all together. This is Valley Ministry Center, and I've told you all why we launched the traditional service. I don't need to tell you again except to say that the Lord instructed us to do so. That beautiful sanctuary to use it. And also, if you're watching by the camera, good morning, by the way. I'm Pastor Bill here at Valley Ministry Center in Vienna, West Virginia, Sunday morning. Also, we... We began that service because we would like to see, and I'm going to speak right to the camera here, we would like to see reconciliation of those that attended over the years, the last 30 years at one time or another, Cornerstone Gospel Church. There are some folks out there that, that are hurt, and we're inviting you to come and... and um, and uh, hug people that things didn't go so well. Um, maybe go up to the altar and pray for what we're doing here in the traditional service. And just come and, and maybe enjoy uh, one of our services here. I know you all have home churches. If you don't have a home church, of course you're invited. 9.30 to traditional and 10, really what amounts to 10.45 for um, contemporary service. So that's why we do that. So speaking about once again to our congregation here, there's there's several hundred people in the room. Uh, yeah, amen. There, it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? We have Edie here this morning joining us. God bless you, Edie. Next door should be playing tonight. You gonna do some um, some country music tonight for the on the piano? No. Carrie okay. <laughs> Carrie Underwood is coming to sing Amazing Grace. <laughs> yeah. We want to integrate. We want to get to know our brothers and sisters in Christ who do come to the 9:30 service. 
Not to mention the fact that it'll be there'll be a special message from a preacher that lives here in town and about communion. And so you're, it starts at six o'clock. The service will probably be about thirty minutes. It's not a big deal. And the treasurer and trustee of the church is buying dinner for all of us afterwards. Sure. Sure. Amen. <laughs> Chief, yeah, Chief is the trustee too. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Away to also door prizes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Door prizes. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I'm, I'm just I'm enjoying myself here, just having fun. I, I like to I like to just enjoy myself. I, but you know, communion. We had communion last Sunday. It was a beautiful service, communion service. And there is no instruction in Scripture from the Apostle Paul. If you read. And uh, I believe it's in uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, there's no instruction from the Apostle Paul on how often to have communion. The word communion in the Greek is ekklesios. No, no, it's eucharistos. It's eucharistos, and which means Eucharist. And taking the Eucharist, the the bread and the wine, the bread and the the fruit of the vine, the bread and the grapefruit juice, taking it as often as you want is okay. However, however, Paul clearly instructs us to come together as a family, a body of believers to come together and and and, and have communion together. And also communion and you might want to prepare yourself even throughout the day, today. Communion is a time of celebration and thanking and remembering the Lord Jesus Christ because he died on the cross for our sins, the sins of all mankind. It's a good time to reflect a little bit today. Go down to the pond, go over into your quiet room and, and have a chat with Jesus. Jesus, is there is there a sin in my life that I'm not attending to? Uh, hatred, uh, anger, pride, rebellion. Um, there's a whole list of things um, that you might want to talk with Jesus because tonight, tonight is also a time of repentance and humility where we as Christians would go kneel down at the prayer rail and put your head on the prayer rail and say, God, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to, I want to put this behind me. Will you please help me? And he will. Paul actually instructs that a person who is, who is unworthy, meaning, first of all, a person who was not born again, may not take communion. It's, it's, it's an affront to Almighty God. And I can tell you that the, the Apostle Paul writes that if we do go to the communion table with an egregious sin, I'm not talking about you know little white lies and all that. I'm talking about an egregious sin. We go to the, we go to the, all, that, the that, uh, take communion with that on our heart. God will discipline you. You say to me, Pastor Bill, how do you know that? Because that's what he did to me. I've told you all my story several times, but for those of y'all on the camera, I I spent three years eating grass outside of the courtyard. Nebuchadnezzar, grass. Yeah, God will discipline you. So when you come tonight, you know, prepare yourself if there's something that you want to lay on the altar. Then tonight's the night to do that. Amen. I'll be sharing some um, some reasons the communion. Uh, how and why it blesses your heart and your soul tonight as well. Okay, good. Praise the Lord. Turn in your Bibles to to nowhere. You don't need your Bible just yet. Okay, is that a is that a book in the Bible? The book of nowhere. <laughs> no. So <clears throat> I'm still teaching about spiritual warfare. We've been in this series, as they say. Um, gosh, a couple of months, and um, we'll have a week 
course, I teach on something else that comes to my heart. Or we have a week of uh, praise and worship. Are you okay? You never come in here. Come on, come in. You're making me nervous. You don't have. There's not somebody out there with a water gun, is there? Going to shoot? Oh God! Woo! Hallelujah! Rick, Rick, everybody say hi to Rick. Ah, hallelujah! All right. But teaching about spiritual warfare, and I want to tell you that I have truly enjoyed studying about spiritual warfare, about Satan, about demons. And last week, I learned all about angels, and I'm excited. We're going to have fun with this, amen, because angels are cool. Amen. Who has ever seen an angel? You know, verified, without a doubt, you've seen an angel. Nobody? You're not sure? Well, Chip? Okay. Was it? Was it? Go ahead. What happened? Uh, angel he was quite larger than me and in a way he was kind of scary mm. but what I remember the most about him he opened up his mouth and made this horn really weird sound that was just overpowering wow I don't know what he was Tell you that every one of you have encountered an angel, probably more than one. The Bible says, "Be careful who you're entertaining and how you treat them." You might be entertaining an angel. You never know. I I I have seen a demon, but I have not had the pleasure of seeing an, an angel just yet. Two weeks ago, we talked about demons, and it was very eye-opening, and it was it was very heavy. Uh, to be honest with you, I listened to the sermon uh, sometime later, and, and I'm like, whoa, wow, did I say all that? Well, and as you know, as a pastor, I believe every bit of the Bible must be taught. Amen? I, I, even things that are going to shock you, the pastor must teach about heaven, about hell, about demons, about angels, amen, about prophecy. I was at a church one time, I was there for about three years, and the book of Revelation was never even mentioned, not once. In my opinion, the book of Revelation be taught, should be taught at least once every other year. We, we, we learned, we taught the, the book of Revelation in 2021, may come back to it perhaps later this year. And, and why, why is that? Well, because if a pastor doesn't teach every book of the Bible, then they're not following the Bible. Revelation 1, chapter 3. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, the book of Revelation. <coughs> And blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. You say to me, Pastor Bill, that was 2,000 years ago. That's not really that long of a time. If you think about it, it's a drop in the bucket. At the end of the day, though, the age of grace, which we are in right now, well, that's a sermon for another time. I won't go there right now. But now that we've learned about Satan, we've learned about demons, let's have some fun and get excited about angels. Can I get an amen, somebody? Did you know there are, thank you for that, I appreciate that. There's 300 references in all of Scripture, starting in the book of Genesis and going all the way to the book of Revelation, and particularly in the Gospels, which write about the life of Jesus. And yet, in the Gospels, there are a ton of references to demons and to angels. Angels are everywhere around Jesus and his ministry. Did you know that? And, and 
there's a reference to, or if you add in the references to what is referred to as the Lord of hosts, there are another 200 references. So there are at least 500 references of angels in the Bible. The host of the Lord are the angel armies of God. They are called the host of the Lord. And this morning, um, well, we were going to sing a Chris Tomlin song, Whom Shall I Fear? But we sang it last last uh, last week. So anyway, maybe perhaps we'll do it this upcoming week. So these hosts, these angel armies, not only do they worship, but they move in battle on behalf of God. And you might call them the defenders of the faith and the of the heavenly realm. Amen. Amen. So as you study angels... You should begin to get excited. There are some wonderful books out there about angels. David Jeremiah has one called About Angels, I think. It's upstairs in the bookstore. That There's 100 books up there, and I can't give them away. Everybody reads on iPads now, but I think a book is fun to hold in your hand. As we study this, and, and we realize that as we study the Bible for years, if not decades, somehow we've missed some important and revelatory accounts of angels. For example, for example, when Jesus was tempted the 40 days in the wilderness, you remember that? And he fought the devil and he won using scripture. And after the devil had departed, the Bible says that an angel came and did what? Minister to him. An angel comes to minister to Jesus in his humanity and all through his, although he has his deity was strong and his humanity was diminished because he was tired he was hungry you think that ever happens to you your humanity becomes diminished you need a little help don't you amen well the Lord will send an angel can you think of a time in your life and I'm talking to the camera too. Listen closely to me. Can you think of a time in your life when you were weak and tired? And temptation was banging at your door. And it was causing you to possibly do something. And you're a Christian. You know, you've got the Holy Spirit in your heart and your soul. And, 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 and it's banging on your door. And it may cause you to do something that you're going to regret. I can think of many times in my life. I... I'm not going to share them right now, but, but it might even damage your life or the lives of those around you. Amen. And what did you do? You called out to God. Did you? I hope so. And mysteriously, somehow you had the strength in your spirit to say no to your soul and to your flesh. Where do you think that strength came from? It came from the Holy Spirit, amen? And it came from a ministering angel. You say the little demon over here talking to you, the angel over here, do yourself a favor, listen to the angel. Angels are ministering spirits and they are real. As you study angels in scripture, it's gonna help you to overcome all the myths, all the folklore about angels that are so popular in our society. People think that angels are these beautiful women with blow, blonde flowing hair and blue eyes. Oh, you know, no, 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 no. That's not what angels look like. No, not, once, not a bit. It, it, we, we see the picture of men, angels. They look like Fabio, right? Everybody know who Fabio is? You know, right? <laughs> these these uh, with these giant wings and then fire coming out of their eyes and and uh, and there's there's millions of poems and stories about angels in 90% of the cases however none of these things are actually accurate in the depiction of an angel in the Bible amen so what does the Bible say about angels who they are what they do and why they matter. And before I continue this, I want to give credit to Dr. and Pastor Jack Graham, who I listened to a, a whole bunch of sermons during the week as I learned about my topic. And most of this comes 
from Pastor Jack Graham. I, I don't want y'all to think that I'm this smart because I'm not. Amen. But I'm able to take good information. And Jimmy's back there going, oh, come on, Pastor Billy. Amen. All right. All right. I want you to open your Bibles now to Psalm 91, please. Psalm 91. <coughs> Turn over to Psalm 91 and verse 1. When you get there, say amen. Okay, and so the Bible says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91. You, you men in the room, may I, may I uh, politely suggest to you that you that you wear wear this psalm out psalm 91 that you even begin to to, to memorize it it is vital to your life and if i could preach for a second oh, oh here we go if i could preach for a second if we ever needed to be under the shadow of the almighty it is now it is now. I, I'm not going to get into world events and wars and politics and all that routine, but I'm just here to tell you, as just as a, somebody who's been studying the Bible over 40 years um, and kind of a sort of an expert on world affairs and so forth, um, get Psalm 91 burned into your hearts. Amen. It says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. What is the shadow of the Almighty? What is that? It, obviously, it's a metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, like a beautiful, like an eagle that would, that would wrap its, its wings around you. And, and protect you. I had a dream many years ago. Um, it, it it was sort of a vision. It was a dream, but it was it was real. It was one of those dreams where you could smell, you could heard the birds chirping. It, it was just it was real. Um, a, a, a very large bird of prey um, flew up on. It, it landed on my shoulders behind me. And it put its wings like this around me and it looked down and it almost touched its beak to my nose. This huge bird. I'm like, oh my. And then it, it flew away. It flew away. I had another vision one time very similar of a snake and it wrapped itself around me and it, it engulfed me and I managed to break my arms free and it came down over the top of me and I grabbed its fangs and I and I pushed it back Serious stuff going on out there, friends. Stay with me here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about angels in battle in a few minutes. You know, I called my brother John and I asked him, I said, what do you, what do you think that bird? John, John's a theologian. He's just backslidden. He's the most backslidden man that's ever lived. He'll get me back, though. As soon as uh, something crazy happens, he'll get me back. And, I think he's just waiting for that. He he said he said what comes to my mind is courage. Do you men have courage? Are you ready to are you ready to to put your hands up and grab the fangs of Satan and push and push him back? You say to me, Pastor Bill, you're, that's ridiculous stuff. No, it's not. The devil, Jesus went to Peter, I'm going to preach. Jesus went to Peter and he said, hey, Peter, guess what? Peter's like, yeah, Lord, what's happening? He said, the devil came to me and wants to sift you like wheat. Don't 
worry, Peter, I got your back. I got your back. Psalm 91 verse 2 says this, I declare about the Lord, He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust in Him. When you're in trouble, you got something going on at the house, there's somebody's burglarizing your chicken coop, what do you do? Besides pull your shotgun out and go out there, who do you call? What do you dial, Dave? 911. 911. May I suggest to you, dear friends, and those of you watching by the camera today, the next time you're in trouble, pick up your phone and dial 911. Psalm 91, verse 1. And then dial it again, 9111. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Hallelujah. You feel like you might be alone, you're not. There are angels, there's an angel with you all the time. Never leaves your side. Sometimes it goes like that. Oh no, don't do that. Don't go on you. I can't move. Ah. Never leaves you alone. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Notice that the Lord orders or commands his angels to minister to us. We don't order or give commands to angels. People that pray to angels are in error. That's as nice as I can say it. Listen to me on the camera. If you are praying to an angel, you're in error. There's no place in the Bible. No place where it says to pray to an angel or any other idol for that matter. I wouldn't say that there's that, uh, that their salvation, or people that do pray, that their salvation would be in jeopardy in any way, but they're simply wasting their time praying to angels. We do not call for angels to do our work or our bidding, and we shouldn't obsess about angels or wonder what they're doing all the time. That is the Lord's concern and not yours. But I can assure you, according to the trustworthy, infallible word of God, that angels are on your side. They are helping you. They are ministering to you. And so <coughs> I draw attention to verse 11 again. The angel, when it says what the angel to do, to guard you in all your ways on their hands, they will hold you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. And angels were created by God to worship God. Did you know that? You're going to be singing in heaven. Let's give it a try right now. Everybody after me. Hallelujah. 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 There we go. Beautiful. Hallelujah. That's good. <laughs> they were created to do spiritual battle for our God and for his people. And to be a witness of the power and the glory of God. Imagine being an angel and seeing the power, the glory of almighty God. This is the mission. It's the ministry of angels. Okay, now, let's do a little technical stuff here for a second. Everybody knows what theology is. It's the study of God. And the more you study the Bible, the more you go to church, the more you are in Bible study, the more you will understand God. And within theology, there is a whole perspective about angels. The more you understand theology, the more you will understand the reason for angels. Amen? Okay, and so as you study the Bible, you're going to understand who they are, what they do, and you're going to understand more about the greatness and the glory and the grace of who? God in your life. That's right. Angels are never about themselves. They're not about their ministry. They are always about their commanding and their calling from God. God is sending angels, millions of them, myriads of them, all around the world, all the time, and they're watching over. 
the body of Christ. All right. Now, I talked about some of us seeing uh, angels in the past, but I want to tell you something about what Paul says. Paul writes that angels long to look on those things concerning the church. Did you know that? Concerning the people of God. Amen. They are in this room right now. They are all around us. There's a spiritual realm in this room. We cannot see it. It is tissue paper thin. And it separates the earthly world, the earthly realm, from the eternal realm. Y'all have heard me talk about dimensions before, so I'm not going to go there right now. Amen. For those of y'all on the camera, if you'd like to learn more about dimensions, feel free to give me a call. I'll be more than happy. Or get out a book. Um, Astrophysics 101 and you can learn all about it but there's only four dimensions that we're aware of and the astrophysicists and the scientists and the people in CERN Switzerland and the Hedron Collider and the God Particle and the Hoax Bissen, Boson, Wosen and all that stuff they have discovered it there are more dimensions than what we know and see and hear right here in the room right now the fact that we don't see spiritual realities doesn't lessen their reality amen and so in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 I'm going to give you another verse here in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 you can write that down and kind of look at it later it says that the temporal world this world that we see is passing away it is transitory. It is not lasting. But the eternal world, the unseen world, lasts forever. Oh, can I have fun with that? Hallelujah. Mm -mm. Uh, it, it, oh, just think about forever for a second. Most people don't think about forever until you get to be my age or older. You start thinking about it then, you know. That's an amazing topic. All around us are things we cannot see, including angels, and they are present in our lives. So what does an angel do? I'm going to give you a few things that an angel does. I have a feeling I'm not going to finish this sermon. There's 17 pages, and I'm on page 7. We may, we may pick it up. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's funny. For those of y'all on the camera, I, I write my sermons word for word because I'm a squirrel. Squirrel, 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 squirrel. Sherry, how are you? Can I get a haircut today? Later on. No, it's all good. Squirrel. What do they do? All right. As I share these things, I pray that the Lord will open the eyes of your heart so that you can literally see what the Bible teaches. You know, sometimes, friends, people read the Bible, they can't see what it's teaching. Every time I open the Bible and I, I start digging through it, I'll, something will come up and I'll go to Michelle and go, honey, I never saw that before. Honey, I mean, I've torn this 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 book apart. I mean, you know, I just tore it apart. I just got this is crazy, and, and it's like, wow, I just saw that for the first time. That's because that's because God gives you, um, He illuminates your spirit to the things of God in little bite-sized pieces along the way. If He gave it all to you once, He'd kill you. You'd go crazy. Amen. So. God eliminates this uh, this particular thing, and it, it teaches us. And what happens here is that, with I, I, as I say, I pray that God opens our eyes. You think about the prophet Elijah. You remember him, Elijah and Elijah. It's Elijah and Elisha. It's one or the other. Which one is it? Who knows? Elijah, Elijah. Elijah is the old guy. Okay, so Elijah is in town. And the Syrians have surrounded the uh, town they're in. I, maybe they're in Jerusalem. I don't know where they are. They're somewhere in the Bible. And they're there. And Elisha is scared to death because the Syrians are closing in on them. And 
he he's doesn't have the spiritual maturity that Elijah has because Elisha hasn't been reading his Bible and going to church and communion service tonight at 6 p.m. And so... <laughs> And so, did I mention? <laughs> yeah. And, and so Elisha's panicking, and, and Elijah says, "Hey God, w would you open the eyes of my servant? He's he's about to hyperventilate." And and God opens the eyes, open the eyes of my, and all the angels, armies, chariots, and and giant angels and swords of in their whoo, man, oh man. Lord, open up our eyes. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, oh, I've already read that. Can I get an amen to that? And so we know that there are powerful angels and armies of angels in an invisible world. It's unseen, but they are surrounding the enemy. And let me tell you something, they're surrounding you. They're surrounding this church. Do y'all think that the devil wants this church to continue to minister on Friday nights to those who come in here. They are lost. They have been in prison. <coughs> They've been addicted to, to this, that, and the other. They are they are brokenhearted. Do you think God wants us to continue to minister? I mean, yeah, he, God does. The, Satan does. <laughs> of course not. He wants to stop us cold, and he's tried many times. The angels aren't going to let it. God will send those angels. Do you think the Lord wants us to meet in here and worship together? I, the devil to meet in here and worship together? I'm, I got about 10 minutes left and I'm going to wish Nell's going to just put me in bed. You can probably tell by the look in my eyes. Like, okay. <laughs> I didn't take any medicine. I swear I didn't. I'm just. Do you think the devil wants us to meet in here and worship? No. Send it all the the, the, the the demons are running like a bunch of pigs into the ocean. No. You think that the you think the devil wants us to have a traditional service next door and somehow or another the, the baby boomers and the and some of the senior citizens in this area that are put going to church, they go, I'm gonna go up there and go to church and see what's going on. You think that, no. God protects us. He protects us from that. Amen. All right. What are angels? They are worshipers. Let's start with that. And we may finish with that. We'll see how far we get. Okay? Angels are worshipers. They're around the throne of God 24-7, adoring Him, worshiping Him. We see this in the book of Revelation, where they are around the throne, and they're joining with the saints of the ages. They are singing Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. I remember that Catholic hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, Lord, I raise my voice to thee. Bum, bum, bum. We've got to remember that angels are created beings and they're created by God for a specific purpose. They're created, they were created in eternity past before the heavens and the earth were even created, before men and women were created. Because they were created by God, they are immortal and they are innumerable. Hallelujah. Scripture says in counting the angels that there are thousands upon thousands and ten thousands upon ten thousands, millions and millions of angels around the throne worshiping God. Woo, hallelujah. Hey, Randy Alcorn wrote a book called Heaven. Do yourself a favor and read it. It'll change your life. I've got it up there in my library, sitting there with all the rest of the books that nobody ever wants to read. Go get it. It's up there. It's free. Take it. Pass it out. Give it to your friends. When I saw, or when I say um, that they saw the Lord high and lifted up, that, that would be Isaiah. Um, he, he, was, he saw Jesus on the throne of eternity. And, and what did he see around the throne? He saw cherubim and seraphim, meaning the shining ones. And they were buzzing around the throne with excitement. Can you imagine this? Um, now let me tell you, it's going to be loud in heaven. If you don't like a loud praise and worship service, you better get used to it. 
as you get to heaven. Can you imagine how loud it's going to be? A billion people singing, We worship you, Lord. Edie, I'm not going to be able to sing tonight. So we're going to have to get Michelle and Stephanie and some others to sing tonight. I bet I can talk to my wife. I'm going to Dave. Dave, do it. <laughs> the activity around the throne of God because because um, because that we are redeemed that activity it should prompt us to worship God more and more yeah oh, sometimes I I, I want to go out into the crowd and get a hold of somebody and say hello Worship God, it's okay. Amen. And I know that people are some people are shy, and I, I and I get that, and I, I truly do. I don't have a shy bone in my body, as y'all know. Uh, well, I'm making a confession right now. Well, I'm, but I, but I want, I want to get it, and I am learning that not everyone going to raise their hands and clap their hands and so forth and so on and and, and that's okay. Amen. But I, I think heaven's going to be a pretty loud place. Amen. Worship time if I just may say is not a warm up for the sermon. I don't have to preach on a Sunday. Y'all do not need me to preach on a Sunday. Amen. We could worship for last week we did. There was no sermon. Just to worship God. And I for those of y'all, and particularly those of y'all watching by the camera this morning, if you're not one of those people that raises their hand and, and dancing around and all that, you that's okay. The words, the words of the song, they're on the screen. We put them on the screens. Amen. We put them on the screens. You can read the words. See the beauty of some of the songs. Christian worship songs are supposed to reflect the Bible. The Bible says there are there are some songs out there. I'd like to do them, but they do not reflect the Bible. There's a song that's really popular right now, and and um, it's a pretty cool song actually. But it, it, it's the 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 tagline to it, the, the line they sing over and over again. It's 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 sophomoreish to me. It's it, you know it's how cool is God, man. You know I I don't know that bugs me. I mean I gotta kind of draw a line somewhere. Amen. All right. So let me add that we must not worship angels. Y'all, everybody knows that I'm sure. You remember <coughs> in the book of Revelation when John was standing there and, and, and a big angel came up and John fell at his feet and the angel picked him up and he said, hey, don't worship me. Worship God. Worship God alone. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible says, actually, I may have that signature wrong. Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation we are all as as born again believers we will inherit salvation we have inherited it we have been grafted into the vine we are we are not the the nation of Israel we are not Jewish God has literally taken the 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 nation of Israel, uh, uh, and he set it aside, and he did it in the first century with the Apostle Paul. He called Paul, who was a righteous, well-trained uh, uh, leader in the Sanhedrin, a Jew, um, a Jew, and he said, these folks aren't going to listen to us, Paul. We're going this way. But I got good news for you today, particularly if you're a Jewish brethren. The Lord has not forgotten about you. And there is a day coming very soon when God, Almighty God himself, will turn his attention to the nation of Israel. 
and he will rise up 144,000 evangelists, every one of them righteous Jews. They will come to Christ, 144,000, and they will indeed begin to bring the nation of Israel to Christ. The Bible wants to save, or the, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to save every single Jew, every one of them. Amen. For now, the Lord is focused on the Gentiles. Guess what? You're a Gentile. Amen? You're not Jewish. And so, as we look at this, we need to understand that we have inherited salvation. And to whom does God send angels? Not to the unsaved world. Oh, people all the time, they don't know Jesus Christ from a football. And they are rejecting him. You cannot, oh, I, I just want to preach. You cannot live in the United States of America and reject Jesus Christ because you haven't heard of him. That is utterly impossible. Uh, you hear his name all the time out there in the world, don't you? Ah, what are you doing? It is impossible to have not heard about the gospel, the message, the life, the death, the resurrection, salvation of Jesus Christ. So many people, they have no problem taking the Lord's name in vain, but they call upon the angel to help them with this. And I'm sorry. You know, there's not one benefit you get. I, I don't know what to tell you, but yeah. Angels show up most often to unbelieve. Oh, you're not going to like this. Angels show up to unbelievers bringing what? Starts with a J. Judgment. Mm -hmm. Can you say Pharaoh? Wednesday nights we're studying the book of Exodus. Yeah. The book of Revelation talks about the pouring out of the bowls of wrath. This, these are executed by angels. Uh huh. Even in the Garden of Eden, angels were sent to guard the entrance of the Garden of Eden because Adam and Eve had sinned and they had been expelled or they left on their own shame the Garden of Eden. And God posted angels there and said, No way. You ain't coming back in. You go out there now and you live the life that you have chosen. Did God abandon Adam and Eve? No, so don't worry on the camera. He didn't abandon Adam and Eve. All right. I'm going to stop there because next week we're going to talk about angels as warriors, which is a very interesting topic. Huh? Michael. Michael. Amen. All right. So, angels, they're here. You have a guardian angel. The guardian angel is powerful. There are millions and millions and millions of angels. There are two thirds. There are two thirds good angels, one third bad angel, and I think possibly that some of those angels are actually being destroyed by the power of Almighty God and the power of the archangels. A lot of the angels are down in a place called Tatara. They were so horrible that God locked them up. Amen. And so as you go about your day, you go about your week, just know that I think Amy Grant said it best. Angels watching over me. Yeah. Every step I take. Thank you, Sandy. You know, what's that movie that Sandy? Grease. Grease, yeah. Thank you, Sandy. All right. So be, be encouraged know that there are angels watching over you. They're ministering to you. They want you to worship. Amen. You've inherited salvation for a reason. I was going to do an altar call at the end of this, but I haven't finished the message. But I will say this to those of you all watching on the camera today. I, I want to say that I don't think there's any time to lose here, friend. I really don't. I want to encourage you, wherever you are, to buy a Bible. 
here's one right here. We actually have a lot of them here at our little church. Find a church near you, whether it's here or somewhere else. Find a church near you that worships God, where the people in the praise band are, are they 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 worship worship with such zeal and and vigor that they're about ready to pass out. Got sweat coming down their face. They're worshiping God. Amen. Find a church where the pastor doesn't do motivational speaking. You can get plenty of motivational speaking from YouTube. Find a church where the pastor opens up the Bible and tells you what the Word of God says, because that's what you need in your life. Amen? The angels are going to be there to help you. But the Word of God, this is what you need in your life. Every issue in your life, every Every victory, every challenge, every up, every down, every sorry, it, every bit of it is addressed in the Holy Scripture, right? the infallible Word of God. So if you want to come visit us here, we are the Valley Ministry Center in Vienna, West Virginia. Amen. Let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, and you all pray with, with me right now and pray for me as I, as I go ahead and do this altar call. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, that if there be anyone here that is not positive, that they are born again, that even right where you sit, that you would just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I accept you. I receive you. I, 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 I beg you to come into my heart. I know you want to because the Bible says you're knocking at the door. I open the door. Come into my heart and be my Savior. If you're watching by the camera, right where you are, just kneel down. Just kneel down and just say, God, I, I don't understand this, but I, I feel that your spirit is, is drawing me. The Bible says that no one comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm on my knees and I'm, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. And I'm asking you to make me a child of God. Make me a king's kid. I accept the pardon purchased at Calvary 2,000 years ago. I accept it. I, I take it. I, I take it into my hands and I put it on my heart. Say thank you. I say thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Just, just say that. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And now help me to live the rest of my life for your glory. If you prayed that prayer this morning, friend watching by camera, please pick up the phone and call someone that you know that's been telling you about Jesus for years. Tell them that you just got on your knees, some some preacher from West Virginia was praying with me and I got on my knees and I gave my life to Jesus. Call grandma, grandpa, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, niece, that friend of yours at work that's been driving you nuts and you want to punch him in the nose because he won't tell on you about you keep stop telling you about Jesus. Call him up right now. Amen. Put water on the seed that was just planted in your heart and tell them you've given your life to Jesus. We're here in Vienna, West Virginia if you want to come visit us sometimes. Amen. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Everybody stand up now. What a mighty God we serve. All angels shall be born. Heaven and earth adore.